Here's a short list of movies to get you into the mood of celebrating America's independence on the 4th of July. Air Force One. The dictator of a rogue neo-Soviet regime in Kazakhstan has just been arrested due to a joint effort between America and Russia, and during a diplomatic dinner in Moscow, President James Marshall declares a shift in the U.S.'s foreign policy that the United States will never negotiate with terrorists. But when Marshall and his family board Air Force One to return to D.C., they are joined by loyalists to the dictator, disguised as journalists and led by one Igor Korshinov. Shortly after the plane is airborne, a mole in the Secret Service helps Korshinov and his men take the plane hostage. They're demanding the release of their leader, but while they may hold the president's cabinet and his family hostage, Marshall has escaped capture. Now it's all up to him to rescue the hostages and stop the bad guys. Yes, it's a die-hard clone. No, that does not mean you should ignore it, because some of the best action movies out there are die-hard rip-offs, and Air Force One is no exception. With Das Boot and never-ending story director Wolfgang Peterson in the director's seat, the movie boasts a claustrophobic environment, breakneck pacing, action that never once breaks your suspension of disbelief, and a stellar acting ensemble led by Harrison Ford and Gary Oldman, and including the likes of Glenn Close, William H. Macy, and Dean Stockwell. If you're looking for two hours of unadulterated fun to go along with your beer and brats, you can't go wrong with Air Force One. Heartbreak Ridge. Producer-director Clint Eastwood plays Marine Corps Gunnery Sergeant Thomas Highway, a veteran of the Korean and Vietnam Wars who has one last tour of duty in him before he hits mandatory retirement age. He's being transferred to his old unit and assigned to take over a reconnaissance platoon whose previous sergeant was a short-timer marking the days till retirement, leading to a platoon of useless turds masquerading as Marines. As if that isn't bad enough, Highway's forced to contend with a pogue commanding officer that's person other than grunts, or people who have non-combat jobs within the military for my fellow civilians. So a Pogue commanding officer and reject marines, and he's trying to rekindle a romance with his ex-wife who happens to work at an off-post bar. First off, if I didn't have your attention at Clint Eastwood, please kindly turn in your masculinity card because your father has failed you. Second, Clint Eastwood's a fucking marine. That's all you need to know. Okay, Eastwood aside, you've got a tale of a hard-nosed old-timer nearing his twilight years who's got to whip a bunch of miscreants into shape while dealing with an authoritative asshole of a commanding officer. If that doesn't get you bleeding red, white, and blue, I don't know what will. Invasion USA. This one stars Chuck Norris as former CIA operative Matt Hunter, who's just living his life out in the Florida Everglades when his old nemesis, a bloodthirsty Soviet named Mikhail Rostov, comes rolling into the States with an army of Latin American guerrillas. Their objective is to spread chaos throughout the U.S. by engaging in widespread acts of terrorism. But there's one man standing between Rostov's army and total annihilation of the American way of life, and his name is Chuck fucking Norris. A vintage piece of 1980s cheese, courtesy of the masters of 80s cheese, that being the Cannon Group, Invasion USA is one of the crown jewels of 80s action cinema. You've got a steely-eyed lone wolf protagonist taking on an army of evil the only way he knows how. With a mullet and beard combo that might as well be woven from Kevlar, a pair of jeans so tight it's a wonder they don't split every time he launches a roundhouse kick, and a pair of balls so huge they might as well be chasing Indiana Jones. Add to that a menacingly unhinged villainous performance from the late Richard Lynch to counteract Chuck Norris's stoicism, and you're in for one hell of a 107-minute ride. Live free or die hard. The fourth entry in the Die Hard franchise sees Bruce Willis as New York Police Lieutenant John McClane, who's one of a number of local law enforcement officers called in by the FBI to pick up high-level computer hackers nationwide. When McClane goes to New Jersey to pick up Matthew Farrell, it doesn't take long before they're dodging bullets from an army of cyber terrorists. Turns out Farrell was one of a number of white hats who were being unknowingly used to assist in the planning stages of a systematic takeover of the American infrastructure by Master mind Thomas Gabriel. While the feds are busy trying to unfuck the system, McLean and Farrell are trying to stay one step ahead of Gabriel. First off, it's a Die Hard movie, so it should be on your watch list by default, provided it's not a good day to Die Hard. Second, two hours of pure testosterone-infused action featuring Bruce Willis at the top of his game despite being 52 years of age when the film released, a cold and calculating villain in Tim Oliphant's Gabriel, a dorky comic relief sidekick in Justin Long's Farrell, an air tight script and some of the most ridiculously fun, practical action you and I will ever witness. Plus, the bulk of the movie quite literally takes place on the 4th of July, 
And before anyone complains about the movie being PG-13, yes, the decision to make a PG-13 rated movie in an R-rated franchise is abundantly retarded. However, pretty much every home video release of the movie has an R-rated cut, and even with the PG-13 rating, the movie still feels substantially more like Die Hard than its immediate successor. And speaking of movies that eclipse a good day to Die Hard, Olympus has fallen. Gerard Butler plays former Army Ranger Mike Banning, a Secret Service agent who used to serve on the presidential detail until 18 months ago, when an accident resulted in the death of the First Lady. In the present day, President Benjamin Asher holds a meeting with the South Korean Prime Minister when a terrorist group, having infiltrated the delegation, mounts a full-scale assault and captures the White House along with Asher and several members of his cabinet. Their aim is to force the U.S. to withdraw their forces from Korea while the terrorists turn North America into a nuclear wasteland. Only problem for them is Mike Banning has managed to infiltrate the White House. Yep. It's another Die Hard clone, this one coming from Training Day and The Equalizer director Antoine Fuqua. And it's one of two Die Hard at the White House movies that came out in 2013, the other one being Roland Emmerich's White House Down. But Olympus Has Fallen, on top of being the movie that A Good Day to Die Hard should have been, is the superior of the two, boasting more bite with the R rating, along with a more compelling lead actor in Gerard Butler as opposed to Channing Tatum's pretty boy non-acting. Comparisons aside, Olympus also contains some brutal, intense action, cinematography, and editing that, while tight and quick, is not hard to follow, and a solid ensemble around Butler, including Aaron Eckhart, Morgan Freeman, Rick Yoon, Angela Bassett, Robert Forster, and Rada Mitchell. If you're looking for two hours of fun, either on its own or as a double feature with Air Force One, Olympus Has Fallen has definitely got you covered.